What is up everyone, my name is Jasper and in today's video I wanted to show you guys how I'm creating my content briefs. So over the last couple of weeks I've been making a bunch of videos about hiring writers and outsourcing content and I think making a proper content brief is an important part of that. So sadly I really haven't been feeling all that well lately so I thought creating these content briefs would be in a slightly easier task and something that I can still do without really exhausting myself. But instead of doing this all by myself, I thought I would just turn on the camera and let you guys have a look at my process on how I'm creating my content briefs. But my content briefs are basically a very small document where I highlight how I like the articles to be written, the title of the article, the word count, and most importantly, the searcher intent. So usually I give them the title, this is something I make, and I try to make these titles a little bit clickbaity, but still just very relevant to the topic. Titles for SEO and on Google are a lot different than titles on YouTube because on YouTube you basically have two titles with your thumbnail and your actual title. There's a lot more room to play with. But in my experience, on Google you really need to state the exact question because if someone is looking something up and they see a very clickbaity title that isn't really showing what the article is actually about, they usually just click on a different result. So getting the right title is something that's very difficult, but as long as you keep doing it, you will improve in it. The content brief will also outline the word count and the word count is judged purely upon the competition. Usually I don't like to go under a thousand words but I have been playing around with the idea of going slightly under that, maybe to 800 words. But so far most of my articles are a thousand words at their lowest. Of course if the article and the question need more words that's perfectly fine as well. There are a lot of articles on my site that are around 2000 words because they simply have a lot of competition or there's just a lot to cover about the topic. I'm really not a big fan of shortening an article purely because the competition isn't really there. I think if there's a topic, it just needs to be covered completely regardless of the word count. And lastly, my content briefs always need to include the searcher intent. Now this is something that is extremely important because it kind of dictates what sort of article the writer will be writing. This is something I will be going into a lot more detail later on, but some questions really aren't for the sort of audience that you maybe think it is. Other than these three main points, I usually also include, if possible, where they can provide some sort of tables or pictures that would be helpful or some infographics. And I also just list some things that I would 100% want to see in the article. This is something that I noticed that if you don't do it, chances are that you're going to see some things missing that you would like to see. For most of us, we are still doing the keyword research and in most cases, we also have at least a general understanding of our niche. So if you have a certain question and you know that topic A and B are really important to support the answer to that question, you may want to see that in the article, but the writer that maybe isn't as experienced with the niche or maybe has a different approach, he or she may not think of that. And if you don't outline that, and if you don't show them that this is something you definitely want to see in the article, they may miss that. So in order to just be safe, I always include some things that I do want to see. Now, of course, this is not applicable for every article, and so is the pictures and tables. Sometimes I just go with the word count title and the searcher intent. So we're here in the computer now, and I just wanted to go over four examples. So the very first one is, uh, how much does a mega yacht cost? Now, I have this title like this, uh, and I put it at a thousand words. Basically, the first two you can kind of ignore because uh, I mainly want to focus on the searcher intent. So what I think is important with the searcher intent is that you get the article right for the audience that is probably going to look this question up. So how much does a mega yacht cost? It is probably not really searched by people that are actually in a position to buy a mega yacht. These things can cost hundreds of millions of dollars and how many people do you know that have hundreds of millions of dollars? Instead, I think this question is mainly looked up by younger people that are interested in seeing how much the luxury life costs. So these are the same type of people that maybe look up how much a Rolex will cost or how much the most expensive whiskeys or champagnes will cost. These are just people that are interested in seeing how much something that is probably out of reach for most people, how much that actually costs. So instead of making this article more like a buying guide, which you would do if the word mega yacht was replaced for uh, like a, a couch or something like that, um, instead of making it a buying guide, you're going to make this an interest article. So these are one of my interest articles. Um, and I think that you can really play into that by highlighting not necessarily the step-by-step -step process of how much everything costs and giving a detailed outline of the most exact costs going into the cents. I think the much better approach for this is instead of listing something like 
uh, $9,099.41 for uh, per night at the docks or something. You just put it at 10,000, you round these numbers up and you also try to make the read a little more interesting, like highlight these luxury aspects of life. So for example, uh, these boats, they probably have a lot of food and drinks on there and the drinks on those types of boats are not bottom shelf. So you can maybe play around with some nice words, make it read interesting because the people that are actually in a position to buy these yachts and actually want to know the breakdown, they're probably not looking it up on Google. They've got their people for that. So I just place everything in this, like this is an interest article. Most, if not all people that search this will not be in a position to buy a mega yacht. Instead, they're wondering how much a yacht like that costs. Play into that by highlighting interesting facts and not by providing a buying guide like article. So this is something I would send to my writer and I would probably attach a short video uh, where I explain the searcher intent in a little more detail. But this right here is typically what a, the first section of my content brief looks like. Really your content briefs, they don't need to be super in depth because if you're going to try and scale your business up, you can't really spend an hour on every single content brief because, because in that case you could just as well just write the article yourself. So this is something I would send them and on top of that, I would send my general writing outline. Now here's the second example, uh, the title, what is the best mouse for PC gamers? Our five best picks. Uh, the word count, I put it a little higher because I typically, when I go for listicles, I typically would like to provide a estimated word count per uh, pick that we give. So instead of uh, saying the whole article is 1250 words, I would maybe like to say that the uh, the intro section and everything around that is going to be 250 words. And then for every single mouse that we are going to cover, I want an additional 200 words. So that kind of breaks it up and makes all of these picks a little more even. Anyway, with uh, best PC gamer mouses, it's obvious that people are looking for something that they can buy. And of course, a mouse is a lot more affordable than something like a mega yacht. So an article like this can be written in a buying guide. In fact, in my opinion, this is going to be a buying guide article um, and I would like to give several options. I always like to give several options unless it's a review about a specific product. So right here, I've got my writing outline. Um, the person searching this is probably looking for a new mouse as this is more practical and less interesting than how much a mega yacht cost. What I mean by that, I maybe could phrase a little bit better, but what I mean by that is that uh, a mouse is something that most people can buy. This is not something that is unreachable for the majority of us. And people that are looking this up are probably looking to buy a mouse right now. They want to know what is the best so they can make an educated purchase. Uh, so right here, it's clear that the mouse will be primarily used for game purposes as that's the title, PC gamers. Uh, a mouse is also something that anyone can afford. So this article should be written as a buying guide like article. So let's go into the third example, uh, title, how to fix a leaky faucet in five simple steps, a thousand words, and then the searcher intent. The searcher intent for this article is in my opinion, a lot easier to discover because of course the person that is looking this is wanting to know how to fix a leaky faucet. It's as simple as that. There really isn't that much guesswork in this one. Uh, but I do want to cover this specifically because I don't necessarily think this is an informational article, but this is more a step-by-step -step guide. So instead of giving general information about faucets, you're giving a step-by-step -step guide on how to fix it. So let's create a content brief for that. So this one is a lot shorter than the other ones and that is because uh, it's a lot simpler. So this person most likely has a leaky faucet and wants to fix it. This is a step-by-step -step guide on how to fix leaky faucets and it's as simple as that. Also embed potential helpful videos and I should also add, uh, add helpful pictures where they apply. I think this is also really important because there are a lot of different parts when it comes to these faucets. Uh, so it may be helpful for people that aren't as knowledgeable about how to fix these things. Uh, so I think a few helpful pictures will go a long way. Anyway then, example four, uh, the title, how long do hardwood floors last? Uh, and then a thousand words. This right here is a purely informational article. This is something that uh, you can't really, this is not really a buying guide. This is not a step-by-step -step guide. This is just purely informational. These people probably have a hardwood floor and they want to know how long it will take before they need to repair or replace it. So that's really the searcher intent. And these informational articles, these are what make up the majority of my articles. So let's create a searcher intent for that. So right here, the searcher intent for this one, uh, this person probably has a hardwood floor and is wondering how long it will last. Well, that's obvious, of course. 
Um, this is an informational article and should be presented as such. So I really just want to highlight that these articles, they should really just give you the information that the person is looking for. How long do hardwood floors last? I don't know the answer, but let's assume it's 15 years. The answer should be 15 years, but with proper care, you can prolong that to 17 years, something like that. So as for things I would like to see in the article, so give estimates on how long these floors last, how to prolong the lifetime and how to take proper care of it. Maybe also include potential options for repair or replacement later on down the line. So once again, these outlines really don't need to be super long or anything like that. Uh, even for very straightforward things like this, like how long do hardwood floors last, I always like to include this section because it kind of gives me time to put everything on paper. Because not only will this help the writer, but it will also help me kind of organize my thoughts. When I need to write this, it really makes me start to think about the topic itself. And when you're doing that, you may come up with things that you wouldn't really have thought of if you would just provide uh, your writer with the title. So this will not only really get me into the topic and give me a better understanding of this article, but it would also help the writer. Anyway, I did mention that I would also go over the general writing outlines. This is not the brief, but this is something I supply every writer with. But I also give this really small section at the end of every content brief, just to kind of remind them. So right here, my, this is basically the structure of every article of mine. So I have an intro section that is basically just introducing the topic. And I always like to uh, try and not end that with a repeat of the question. So if we have the topic of how long do hardwood floors last, uh, I don't want the intro to end with, so how long do hardwood floors last? I don't really like the way that, uh, that it's phrased. I don't think it helps anything. It's really just an added sentence that could be replaced by something a lot better. After the intro, we get into the answer paragraph and this is really the most straightforward answer that uh, this question can have. So with hardwood floors, how long they can last? Suppose that they can last 15 years, but with proper care, they last two years longer, uh, as we used in the example. The question would be, a hardwood floor lasts 15 years, but can be prolonged to 17 years if you take proper care of it. Now, I do not know how to take proper care of it, but taking proper care of it maybe mean waxing your floor or uh, cleaning it every now and then. I don't know, but that should also be included in this section. From there on, we go into the read on section. This is just basically there to let the reader know there's more to share. And from there on, I basically just go into the subheadings. And these subheadings usually include an answer paragraph and then a more in-depth answer to the question of the subheading. Now the subheadings go from most important to least important um, and they really should just supplement the uh, main question. Other than that, I really don't send my writers anything more because I would like to still give them some sort of freedom in writing. But that is really it for this video. So this is how I create my content outlines. It is a really simple process, but a useful one nonetheless. Anyway, I really want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.